Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Siner. Today, Bob will discuss how data management and data governance overlap. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just to note, Zoom defaults to chat to send to just the panelists, but you may absolutely switch that to network with everyone. For questions, we'll be collecting them via the Q&A section. And to find the chat and the Q&A panels, you can click those icons in the bottom middle of your screen to activate those features. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Siner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and the Educational Services and the publisher of the data administration newsletter, tdan.com. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I'll give the floor to Bob to get his presentation started. Hello and welcome. Hey, Shannon. Hey, everybody. Thank you for attending this month's webinar. Um, somehow, some way, when Shannon and I are putting together the series of topics for the for the year, we come up with topics that tend to be very hot at the moment that the, the webinar is taking place. So this one, particularly for several of the organizations that I'm working with and several other organizations that I know about, they are struggling with trying to define the differences, the similarities between data management and data governance and where they overlap and how they can work together. So that's a great topic that somehow Shannon and I hit it right for this month for this topic. Um, it seems like there's a lot of people that are interested in this topic. So thank you again for taking the time to, um, to, to be with us live or to listen to the recording of this webinar. Before I get started, I always like to spend a minute talking about some things that I have going on in, in my life, in my data management, data governance life. And as you know, I do this webinar series on the third Thursday of every month. Next month, we're going to be talking about gaining leadership support for data governance. That might be an important topic to you for your organization as well. Um, I'm also going to be speaking at several events coming up. A couple of them are Dataversity events. The, the DGIQ West Conference in San Diego. Actually, I'm doing a full day presentation in three, week, three weeks from today. So if you're still interested in that conference, if there's still room, please look for that. Um, also, Enterprise Data World is, on, is in person in Anaheim in September. I'll be speaking there. The big news is that just yesterday, my second book was released. And it's called Non-Invasive Data Governance Strikes Again. I'm not going to spend uh, too much time or any time talking about it here. But if you are interested in how non-invasive data governance strikes again, the first book came out in 2014. I've learned a lot of lessons. I've gained a lot of perspective in the years since then. So I'm including, I've included those in the new book. Um, I also have several lesson plans, learning plans available through Dataversity, one on non-invasive data governance, one on non-invasive metadata governance, and one on business glossaries, dictionaries, and catalogs. My consulting business is KIK Consulting and Educational Services. I refer to that as the home of non-invasive data governance. Shannon talked about the publication, TDAN, um, and, and in my spare time, or as I have time, I'm also an adjunct faculty member at Carnegie Mellon University here in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So what are we going to talk about today in terms of how data management and data governance overlap? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to share with you some foundational definitions of what data management are and what data governance are. And there's not one single definition that's accepted across industries, across organizations. So I'm gonna share with you some definitions and how you might, or things that you might wanna consider when you're putting your definitions to what your organization means by data management and data governance, how they overlap, how they don't overlap, how they need to work together. Those types of things are really important. We're also gonna talk about how they're the same and how they're different. Um, and how important it is to build a partnership between the people that have the responsibilities for data management and the people that have responsibilities for data governance and the functions of those two disciplines. And then last, I'm going to talk about how, how do we go about advancing the two disciplines together? And we're really going to focus on the overlap. I'll share with you a diagram, <clears throat> excuse me, share with you a diagram that I put together that kind of outlines 
how data management and data governance overlap. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, first thing I'd like to do in all of these webinars is share with you just real quickly before we do a deeper dive into the definitions, my quick definition of data governance, my quick definition of data management, and a couple other things. Um, I refer to data governance as being the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of data. Um, a lot of my clients don't like that definition. They think it's worded too strongly. Uh, but at the end of the day, you need to be able to execute and enforce authority over data. That is, when the government comes to you and tells you you need to comply in a certain way, they're not asking you. They're telling you that you have to. So you need to execute and enforce authority where it's necessary over data. And data management, I don't really have a regular definition for data management, but this is what I consider it to be a cohesive set of disciplines focused on delivering quality data and information. So you can just see by these definitions that there's gonna be some overlap, at least in people's understanding as to what data governance does and what data management does. So I'm just gonna share these definitions real quickly too of data stewardship and what a data steward or who a data steward is. Um, I refer to data stewardship as being formalized accountability for data. So if you use data that has to be protected, you're a steward of that data. You need, it's not optional, you need to protect that data. If you're defining data, if you're producing data as part of your job, if you're formally accountable for how you define, produce, and use data, I consider you to be a data steward. So that's why I say a data steward is a person held formally accountable for what they do with the data. So with for their relationship to the data, basically. And then in terms of metadata and data documentation and those types of things, I refer to metadata as data that improves both the business and technical understanding of the data. And yes, there is such a thing as metadata governance, because as I've said in a lot of the webinars in the past, the data is not going to govern itself. The metadata is not going to govern itself. Somebody has to have the responsibility for the metadata as well. And those people basically are metadata stewards. So the first subject that I really want to go into some detail on today is just some kind of foundational definitions for what data management and what data governance is. And I'll share with you my full definitions and DEMA and the Data Warehousing Institute and IBM. There's a bunch of different definitions and there's no single correct answer for your organization. So we're going to need to also talk about, well, how do we take these definitions and how do we construct what would be a correct or at least a proper definition for your organization? So then we'll talk about what, what should your definition really depend on and what are some of the core differences between data management and data governance? Because to a lot of people, data management is very operational in nature and to data governance is actually very people oriented and very behavioral in, in, uh, in what it focuses on. But there certainly are, um, there are overlaps and they need to, we need to figure out in organizations what it's gonna take for these disciplines to work together. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to do was focus on some definitions of data management. And so, as I said before, data management is a cohesive set of disciplines focused on delivering strategic data with quality and confidence. Um, it is. If you look at the DEMA framework, the DEMA wheel, it has a whole bunch of different disciplines. It has a, a set of dis disciplines that hopefully would be cohesive in nature and within your organization. But even DEMA has now defined it as being the development, the execution, the supervision of those things, plans, policies, programs, practices. And what do they do? They control, protect, deliver, enhance the data. There is a lot in that definition from DEMA International. It's a great definition. It certainly needs to be dissected a little bit. It could certainly be broken into pieces with each of those pieces being explained. Um, the, the Gartner IT glossary says that data management encompasses the practices, the architectural techniques, Again, I don't want to read the complete definition to you. In fact, I have another page of definitions of data management, and it's a set of disciplines that supports the management of data. That's a cheeseburger definition by, by my definition. A cheeseburger definition is a definition that includes the words from... So if you define a cheeseburger as a burger with cheese, and you define data management as supporting the management of data, 
I, I think it, it becomes a cheeseburger definition. And then data management is the development, execution, and supervision. There's a lot to each of these definitions. And so I don't know if your organization is thinking about selecting one of these or, or building your own, but at some point, especially if you have the functions of data management and data governance in your organizations, you're going to need to be able to differentiate between the two. So having a definition of data management, especially if you have a data governance function, is going to be important because people need to or people are interested in knowing what is the difference between these two disciplines. And there's a lot of reasons for wanting to, to differentiate between these and, and the, because they may be reporting to different parts of the organization. They may have different functions or different, um, different projects that they're working on. It's important to define these things. So here's a, just at least, I, I shared with you five definitions of data management. And there might be something in there that you could use as you define your definition of data management for your organization. So now let's do the same thing with data governance. And I always use my definition of the execution and the enforcement of authority over the, over the definition, production, and usage of data and data assets. It's worded strongly, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how what approach you take to data governance. If you take a non-invasive or a command and control or a kind of a traditional, if you build it, they will come type of an approach, you need to execute and enforce authority. So I like that definition, even though most organizations don't tend to gravitate toward it. Um, if you look at the, again, at the Gartner IT glossary, it says data governance is the spe specification of decision rights accountability framework, the Data Governance Institute, my good friend Gwen Thomas, Data Governance encompasses the people, process, and information technology, DEMA International, the exercise of decision-making authority, um, IBM, it's a system of decision rights. Again, there's a lot of standard, standard terms that are being used across data governance and data management. And not only that, but they seem to share some of the same terms. So if you're wondering why there's confusion between data management and data governance, that's because we're defining them the same way. Maybe we need to get away from the way that we're defining them, talk about how they work together and instead of defining them using some of the same terminology. So when I started looking at these definitions, I put together this diagram. And I really like the concept of action delivers outcomes because that's what when you when you're developing a program you want to have you want to take action you need to deliver something and what are you delivering you're delivering outcomes when it comes to your data and then i went and looked at each of the definitions that i just shared with you and and um, looked at the action words that took place at the beginning of those and what it said in the middle and what it said at the end basically try to pull out the actions and what was being delivered and the outcomes that could be expected and so if you look at what I when I say that data governance is the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of data, you could almost pick for one from each of the columns. And, and I would say that the same thing holds true. Maybe you would pick multiple from the columns or add things to the columns that make sense to your organization. But when it comes to constructing a definition of data management and data governance, there's a lot of definitions that are out there. And I'm not gonna give you one that I say you should use because it really depends on your organization. In fact, I wanna talk about what should your definition depend on? And a lot of times, here's just a list of things. And I hope you'll go back and look at this slide deck at some point when you're putting together your plan for data management and data governance, that it really should depend on the organizational objectives. What is your organization trying to accomplish? How? regulated is your industry? How much do you need to focus on the life cycle and the different types of data? Again, don't want to walk through each of these things in significant detail. Maybe at some point, some of these subjects would be great for additional webinars in future years of the webinar series. Um, but all of these things, the organizational structure, how you're going to scale, build, scale this across your organization, are you concerned about ethics and privacy? Is business value important to you? All of these things are things that you might want to consider when you're starting to build 
your definition. So again, thinking about the, the previous slide that had the three different buckets of action, deliver outcomes, um, make sure that your actions are aligned with the things that are important to your organization. Make sure that the outcomes are important and, and the things that are being delivered along the way. So again, just a different way to look at the definitions of data management and data governance. And maybe it would be good to have an industry standard definition or at least agree on the idea that data governance is more, well, let's use the term operational to start and that data governance is more people and behavioral oriented, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit as we go through the rest of the slides in the webinar. So I have a friend that referred, a good friend, a friend of data diversity, Len Silverston, who told me at one time that we shouldn't refer to it as data governance. We should refer to it as people governance because it's really people's behavior, how they define, how they produce, how they use data and how they're held accountable for it. That he said, we should really call it people governance instead of data governance. I've talked to Len about it. He doesn't remember having that conversation, but I remember it pretty clearly. I think it's good. I think it's a good way to look at it that data governance is really more the behavioral aspect of the management of data, if you want to put it that way. So people governance instead of data governance, and I haven't seen an organization that's used that phrase yet. Um, I say execution and enforcement of authority, it certainly has a behavioral focus. If you're going to execute authority, you're going to enforce authority, it has to do with what people in, in your organization are doing. So it has a very behavioral focus. And then the formalization of accountability, if you remember, that was the definition I shared for stewardship. Formalization of accountability, that is very behavioral focused. But when it comes to the definitions that I shared, of data management, it was very operational, monitoring, reporting, those types of things. But when we think about the technologies that are associated with data management and data governance, well, that's where there's some of the issue. That's where there's some of the blend is, I hate to use the term, but who owns the technology? If you have a data catalog tool, it's a data management tool. It's also a data governance tool. So there needs to be some coordination and cooperation between the groups that are doing data management and data governance. Instead of the tool falling into one group's hands, it should really fall into both groups' hands. And they should both be partners, basically, in how they work together. So that's the definition. I know I feel like I spent a lot of time just on the definition of data management, the definition of data governance. I want to spend a little bit of time now talking about the function of each of these disciplines. And I think that the operational versus behavioral aspects of data management versus data governance might come a little bit more, excuse me, into focus as we talk about the scope and the focus, we talk about the activities, and we talk about the implementations of each of these different uh, disciplines within organization. So let's start by looking at the scope and focus. So typically, and again, this is from my experience, and please use the chat room, the chat board, if you've experienced things differently, or if you have some ideas as to things that you can share with people to help them to differentiate between their data management and their data governance functions, please feel free to do that. But here, in, in my experience, in data management tends to operationalize certain aspects of how data is managed or how data lives throughout its life cycle. And data management focuses a lot on, on the processes and the technologies, you know, looking to make certain that there's efficient and effective ways of handling data throughout the life cycle. That's really a, a general description of data management, but that's really what's typically in focus, at least in some of the organizations that I've worked with in terms of what their data management programs look like. In terms of data governance, Oftentimes, and I'm not saying that data management is not strategic and organizational in its focus, but data governance is maybe more strategic and organizational in its, in its focus. In fact, in the Carnegie Mellon program, I work in the, you know, when they start talking to CDOs and, and developing chief data officers and chief data analytic officers, a data strategy is the number one item. Data governance is the number two item on the list of things that 
people with that level need to consider because governance is going to be required. Management is going to be required. Um, so data governance certainly has a strategic and an organizational focus. As I mentioned before, it's a very much a, the behavioral aspects of data management. And in the framework that I share, at least for the things that need to be considered, at least from a behavioral focus for data governance, there's the six core components of the data needs to be focused on the roles, the processes, the communications, the metrics, and the tools, at least from a behavioral perspective in, within the organization. So now let's look at the activities of data management versus data governance. So again, data management, it tends to be the operational aspects of handling and maintaining data. And I started looking for, well, what are some of the terms associated with what data management does in a lot of organizations? And here is just a laundry list. It, they're responsible for data collection, acquisition, storage, organization, all of these things. Privacy, analytics, maybe insights, but they're not going to do all these things on their own. The activities of data management have to do with all of these things, but they can't do these things in a, in a closet by themselves. They need to work with other people. They need to depend on people behaving, behaving appropriately in order for data management function to function properly. But data management has their, their, uh, their hands full so, with so much of the technical and the operational aspect of handling and maintaining the data that it's oftentimes a relief to them to know that they don't also then have the responsibility of data governance. Uh, because it is something that is different. Now, if we look at the activities of data governance, again, very behavioral focused. It focuses on the framework, on the policies, on the stewardship. We talked about stewardship earlier, the committees and the teams, the standards, all of those types of things. Ensuring compliance and risk management. It's, it's data governance the activities are looking to make certain that the data is consistent, compliant, responsible handling of the data and information. So at least when it comes to activities, there seems to be a, a relatively clear differentiation between the activities of data management and data governance. And again, I'd be curious as to what your thoughts are on how they're interrelated within your organization. So the third aspect of defining the function of each discipline has to do with the implementation of data management. So oftentimes the, the implementation of data management comes through the execution of processes and technologies and practices, you know, basically those types of things. It, it comes down to the development and the, the building and the maintenance and the retention of the data in databases and data sources, the, the data warehouses, the data lakes, building the platforms, you know, data integration, quality store, all of these things seem to be key verbs or key terms that are used when you're defining, well, what does data management do? What are the implementation factors? What are the things that data management focuses most of their time on? In terms of data governance, again, going back to the definition that I shared earlier, it really has more to do with the execution and enforcement of authority over the data. So again, the, the implementation has to do with implementing a framework, implementing a structure that might include, well, should include the roles and responsibilities. We've done several webinars in the years that we've been doing these webinars on data diversity on specifically the roles and responsibilities. You know, setting up policies, setting up best practices, setting up standards. So, and, and again, what are some of the things that the data governance focuses on in terms of the implementation? From my experience, it has been stewardship. Steward, the organizations talk about the stewardship approach to data governance. How are we going to govern our data? We're going to do it through the people of the organization and how they behave associated with the actions that they take with the data. I know a lot of organizations use the term owners to define people at certain level of accountability or responsibility for a, a set of data. I tend to shy away from the term owner because it, the organization typically owns the data. Steward is the appropriate term because a steward by definition is somebody that takes care of something for somebody else. So data governance, the implementation of data governance is oftentimes done through stewardship recognizing who the stewards are, helping them to be held accountable, 
you know, escalating issues and resolving issues and enforcing levels of authority over the people in the organization. Because again, left to their own accord, people will define their own data sets over and over and over again. And you'll, you'll have silos of data and you'll have multitudes of data resources. I don't know if that sounds like your organization, but without governance, that's what happens. So we need to implement governance. We need to hold people accountable for the data. We need to focus on stewardship as well. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is how are data management and data governance, how are they the same? How are they different? Um, does it matter? Why does it matter? Does anybody, does anybody really care? Um, I did a podcast with a good friend of mine, Anthony Aldman, not too long ago, where we just spent an hour, I spent 40 minutes or so talking about, does anybody really care about the difference between data management and data governance? And if I recall correctly, we came to a conclusion that, yeah, people do care, especially if it's causing problems or, or it is presenting issues within your organization. So how are they the same? Well, they both focus on data. They both require some level of organizational alignment. You know, people in the organization have to have responsible responsibility for it. It needs to reside somewhere in the organization. They both tend to focus on policies. A lot of times there's information security policies. Sometimes there's data classification policies, data handling policies, retention policies. They're all data policies. So that's, again, something that they're this, they share, something that they have in common. They all both require collaboration. They both require levels of accountability for, for people's actions that they take with the data. And, you know, we can't get away from it. You know, they, they both involve the need for compliance and risk management as well. So data management and data governance focus on the data of the organization. It's not, shouldn't be surprising to us that there's a lot of similarities that between the things that they are both trying to achieve. The thing is that, that we need to differentiate between what, are, what is the function of data management and what is the function of data governance. So now let's talk about how they're different. They're, they're the same in a bunch of ways. I think that's understood in a lot of organizations, but how are they different? So we talked about the focus and the perspective. We talked about the scope and you know, those things were, were discussed earlier, but oftentimes when organizations, when it comes to the level of abstraction as to what do we mean by data management and data governance, data management tends to be more concrete. It tends to be more hands-on in organizations. You've got data modelers, you've got data integrators, you've got data mappers and analysts and scientists, you know, that or that a lot of times have a very close relationship to the data management function within the organization. That's very concrete and very hands-on. And then there's data governance, which is there trying to ensure the consistent and responsible practices are taking place in how the data is being managed. So again, one way that they're different is just in the level of abstraction, where data management is more concrete, is more hands-on, and data governance is more, again, focused on ensuring consistent practices uh, and that people are being held accountable for what they're doing with the data. When it comes to roles and responsibilities, they're different as well. And I'll, I outlined a, just a couple or a handful of role names in data management and what some of those roles, what, what some roles might be in a data governance program as well. So you don't typically see data governance programs that refer to roles as data engineers or database administrators or data modelers, analysts or scientists um, as specific roles within, within a, a data governance program, but you do see those in a data management program. In a data governance program, you're gonna have a council or a committee, you're gonna have subject matter experts or domain stewards, domain owners in the organization. You're gonna have stewards, you're gonna have partners. The roles are different too. And so there is oftentimes in data management, data management oftentimes falls under IT and under IT there's IT review boards and those types of things. There are, there are role differences in data management versus data governance. And so I'm sure that if you think about who participates in data management activities now versus data governance activities, 
you probably already have different names for those folks. So the next question is, so, so we talk about how they're the same, we talk about how they're different. And the question really becomes is, does it matter or who cares if there's a difference between data management and data governance? Well, the truth is why it matters is because often there's more than one of these functions within your organization. So if you have multiple functions, one that covers each, then there's going to be discussion around who does what, or at least at least from my experience, what I've seen is that data management functions have been around a lot longer than data governance functions have been around, whether it's called data management or something else. So data governance is more of the new kid on the block, maybe not that new because now data governance has been around for a while. But you know, one of the things that that I hear is that. Well, somebody's already doing the function that data governance is doing. The truth is the data management has so much on its plate already that it doesn't necessarily want to or really need to duplicate the activities that data governance does. You know, it's enough of the blocking and tackling of the data of the daily operational life cycle of the data to have to worry about the authority and the accountability and the um, and the standardization and those types of things and people's behavior, you know, maybe it's time that we can differentiate that from what data management does and really define a separate data governance function for that because the data is not going to govern itself. We know that, so we need to have a function that is at least focusing on the governance of data. So data management doesn't want to duplicate what data governance does data management already has enough that they're working on to begin with. Truly, these two functions need to be partners. They need, they need to work together. So if, if you look at the operating model, and I don't really have time to go through it today, I kind of point down to where the data governance partners are. I wanted to make that a little bit bigger for you so you can see the operating model. There's a lot of moving parts to a data governance program. The fact is that most of these already exist within your organization maybe not under these names. They don't have to be given these names because these names are, are roles associated with data governance. But just wanted to show you, why do people, why is it important? Well, because you may have two functions and the question is going to come up as to who does what. So the, the next question is, does it matter? Well, does it matter that we differentiate between data management and data governance? Is anybody asking? Is, is there a question about it? I know that with several of my clients right now, there is definitely a question as to not only where governance should reside or what is the relationship between the data management function and the data governance function. And you know what? They're looking at these things in terms of being more operational for one and being more behavioral for the other. So really, it depends on if somebody's asking in your organization, that's going to be the time that data, the, that differentiating between data management and data governance is going to be important. So is there a conflict? Is there a need for a clear definition? You know, my thinking is that that there's the chances are that at some point, the similarities and the differences are going to need to be clearly articulated by somebody. So, you know, why should you care? Why should anybody care? Because they couldn't report to different parts of the organization. They could have different management. They certainly could have different budgets and, and have different resources that are associated now with data management and data governance, plans and strategies. You know, even, I have the word different on there four times. You know, why should anybody care? Because these things are different. As I talk the rest of the webinar here about how to part to get these groups to partner together, I think that's really a key thing is we don't want them to be different. We need these groups to be communicating at the highest level that they can within the organization to have some coordination, some cooperation between the groups. So I told you I was going to share a diagram with you, and uh, I wish I had more than an hour to spend on this subject, but I don't, and, and I'm going to just focus on these things right now. Next thing we want to focus on is building a partnership between data management and data governance. And if you look in the upper left-hand part of the diagram, it has data governance and what some of their people behavior-oriented uh, responsibilities are, and that they're responsible for the governance of structured data, unstructured data, external data, all sorts of data in the organization. Well, data management is responsible for that same data. So that's one of the biggest problems is we're governing the, the same data that we're managing. 
it's, I, mean, I, I shouldn't say it's a problem, but it's it's a point of contention in organizations. And when you look at what data management does, the architecture, the platform, the metadata management platform, at least, you know, quality warehousing, master data, a lot of those things, I would think that you would agree with me, would fall under data management. And then actually, when I put this diagram together, I included information security because the organization that I was working with that was those were the big three that really needed clear differentiation. But the, the biggest point here is look at the right hand side of each of those bubbles. They're governing, they're securing, they're managing the same thing. We need to focus on the, the middle part of this diagram, and that is the partnership between these groups. And so we're going to focus a couple of minutes here on the formality, accountability, coordinate, all of these things in terms of how do we build a partnership between data management and data governance. And again, <clears throat> I don't know what uh, what appetite your organization has for this, but these are all considerations when you're looking to put some format. And again, I'm not telling you that you need to do all of these things, but you should be considering when it comes to formality, having these two parts of the organization collaborate and work together and build shared goals and build integrated processes and workflows, communicate together instead of communicating independently and having cross-functional training. So the data management people are, are well aware of what's happening in data governance and that the data governance people are well aware of the activities that are taking place in data management and look to find ways to have formal joint initiatives so if you're building a new data warehouse or data lake or analytical platform or you're integrating systems, work together formally, put a formal plan together for how data management and data governance work together. The second one's accountability. Have clearly defined responsibility, roles and responsibilities as to who does what. Have, you know, work on policy together. You know, make certain that data management understands what stewardship is and how the stewards play a role and how it's not necessarily data management function oriented. The metrics and the, the key performance indicators, the training and the education, these are things that you might want to consider that the data management, the data governance groups work together and build a partnership on these things. Coordination. Like as I said before, instead of communicating separately, communicate together. Even if they're in different parts of the organization, they can, they need to partner together. You know, do shared services like a business glossary, metadata management, data integration, data quality initiatives, all these things. The development of your data governance framework should be a partnership, a coordinated effort between your data management and your data governance group. So again, these are concepts and ideas of ways that you can get your data management group and data governance group to talk to each other, to work together. Then there's the cooperation, you know, establish a shared vision for what data management and data governance are doing together across again cross-functional training a lot of these are repeats you know joint problem solving shared metrics create these project teams get them to work together and look for ways to get continuous communication and feedback from people in terms of the outcomes again remember the the definitions the outcomes are being so important the, the communications about the outcomes of data management and data governance working together. Instead of there being a question of how these two functions operate separately, the question should be how do these, how do these functions, how do these disciplines complement each other? When it comes to operations, you know, align your data management practices with your data governance policies and the other way around. Align your data governance practices with your data, data management policies if you have data management policies. You know, share the catalog, share in the in data lifecycle management and the governance of the data and the stewarding of the data throughout the data lifecycle, data quality management. Again, don't want to read all of these things to you, but you know, build a partnership between data management and data governance that is operationally based. Because if it's active parts of projects and things like that, people are going to see with their own eyes what data governance is doing and what data management is doing. And therefore, we can not only share with people how they are the same, but how they're different and how they complement each other and the value that's coming from each of these disciplines independently. The execution, find ways to work together. Again, ways to build a partnership, 
joint planning, joint strategy development, you know, cross-functional project teams. I think that's been on there three or four times, whereas get these folks to work together. That is the way to get data management and data governance to overlap, at least in the ways that they work together. Um, change management is, is extremely important. Communications, all these things. Just make certain that you're talking, that if you're in one group, you're talking to the other group and you're fi figuring out ways that we are going to work together instead of, again, constantly raising the question of, well, what does one part of the organization do versus what the other part of the organization does. And the last, uh, the last item around building the partnership was communications. So I, I mentioned it a couple of times earlier, look for ways to be able to communicate together. I mean, if you have a joint communication strategy, I'll tell you this, with every organization that I work with, when they get started with data governance, building a data a, a communication strategy or a plan is a critical component of their success. They've got to communicate effectively to the organization, even the difference between data management and data governance, but they can't communicate with the executives and the strategic level the same way that you communicate with the tactical and the operational levels. So you need to have a plan for how you're creating that and delivering that communication it should be a coordinated plan between data management and data governance. Collaborative training and workshops, regular stakeholder communications, all those types of things. Communicate together. Then people will start to view you as being complementary rather than being independent. So I'm going to go back to that diagram I shared with you and then uh, have one more section here real quickly to run through. And then I'm going to toss it back to Shannon to see if we have any questions today. Um, but the, the idea, at least I would hope one of the things that you would get from this webinar is that there needs to be an effort, a, a focused, a um, resolute effort to get these disciplines to work together because their reporting structures may be different, that people may be working apart you know, when they're working together. How do we start focusing on getting these people to become partners? Again, going back to the diagram, the partnership was everything I just talked about in the last 10 minutes about the formality down through the communications. That's where these things tend to overlap. But then there's always the responsibilities, the individual responsibilities of each of these groups. So let's talk about reporting structure, working apart, working together and becoming partners. Um, you know, at least this is some of the ways that I've seen it, it, it establish good, strong working relationships between data management and data governance functions is that they establish dedicated reporting lines. So it's not really a question as to who reports to who or what function each of these groups has. You know, establish those dedicated reporting lines and make sure that they're clearly stated to the organization. If they're not in the same dedicated reporting line, then account for that somehow in the way that the organizational structure is set up. Because data governance should not work separately from data management. Data management should not work separately from data governance. If they're not both within the same function, there needs to be some level of cooperation, uh, these groups working together. Executive oversight and sponsorship, it's the one of the, 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 the very first best practice for most organizations that if people, if your executives don't support, sponsor, and understand governance, don't under, support, sponsor, and understand the difference between data governance and data management, then they're, they're gonna have a very hard time continuing that level of support, sponsorship, and understanding. You know, create the proper committees, the metrics and the performance reporting, um, advance the disciplines together through reporting on compliance and risk management and what data management has done versus what data governance does, focus on continuous improvement in reporting. Find ways to get these folks to work apart from each other because these days, especially, it used to be a lot easier when we were all in the same office and we could pull the data management team and the data governance team together. But right now we need to take advantage of virtual collaboration tools, you know, clear, having clearly defined roles and responsibilities, making sure that we're educating and training people that we get good at holding remote meetings whenever necessary. It's still a very remote world, but we need to find ways for these two disciplines to work apart from each other. 
but at the same time, we need to find ways for them to work together. And that's the whole concept of partnership is, again, the cross-functional collaboration, getting the practices to work together and integrating the things that they're doing, sharing goals and metrics, communications, training, all of those types of things. So there is an overlap between data governance and data management. We just need to focus on it. We need to define those things. Hopefully, some of these things that I've shared within the webinar today will help you to start getting some of those conversations going. So the last thing that I want to share is, you know, establish that partnership framework. What does it mean for these functions to work together? Develop a joint strategy or in your data management strategy or data strategy in general for your organization or business strategy in general. Differentiate between data management and data governance and then and define the need for both of these things. Define the need for cross-functional collaboration, a shared framework, all of these types of things, especially do those things that you need to get the support, uh, support from one group for the other, and then support for having separate functions that focus on these things. So with that, I... I um, just want to kind of summarize the things that I've talked about in the webinar. We started with the foundational definitions for data management and data governance. We went into defining what some of the functions were for each of them. And I don't know if you agree or disagree with me. It's hard to see that in, on a webinar as to whether or not the data management function really becomes more operational in nature and the data governance function becomes more people oriented and behavioral in nature talked about how data management and data governance are similar, how they both focus on, on the data of the organization, what it takes to build a partnership between these two functions, and then adv advancing the two disciplines together. And with that, Shannon, I am going to kick it back to you to see if we have any questions today. Bob, thank you so much for another great presentation. It's been uh, fantastic. And just a reminder, and just to answer the most commonly questions that have been coming up several times uh, today is a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides, links to the recording, and anything else requested throughout here. So diving into the questions, Bob, um, what percentage of data management falls in IT? What percentage of data management functions fall in IT? I'd say most of them. I don't know. I don't have an exact figure for you. But um, because it's operational, because there's a lot of technology aspects to data management, it does tend to fall in IT. So if I had to guess a number, I would say somewhere north of 85%. That's just a number. I don't know if people are agreeing with me or disagreeing with me, but I see the data management. And back in the days that I was in a data management function at a Blue Cross Blue Shield player plan here in the U.S., a health insurance company, data management did fall under IT. So it just seems to be several of my clients now. Data now. If the question was where does data governance reside, or where or how many of them fall under IT, I'd answer the question completely differently. Sure. Are you waiting so, for me to answer that question too? <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, you're more than welcome to if you like. <laughs> well, you know, let me, let me just talk about that real quickly because I, I ran short this time and that's like, that's okay. So we have, have a couple minutes. Um, there are some people that will tell you that your data governance function, if it resides in IT, it will fail. I am not one of those people. I have seen successful data governance functions fall under IT is it the best place for it? Probably not. If it is viewed, if data governance is viewed as being an IT function, even by the business folks, then it's more likely that it's going to fail. And you're going to have a harder time to engage people from the business function. So typically it's better to fall under a chief operating officer, a chief administrative officer, a chief data officer, if you would have one, or a chief financial officer. So that's how I would answer that differently if the question had been asked around data governance versus data management. Makes sense. So how do you pitch the ROI of this? The ROI of this? Well, if it, like I said, why does, why should you care? 
because if you do have two different functions within your organization, you should be investigating how they are complementary and how they are different and how they can work together and all of those types of things. So if that's what you mean by the ROI of this, you know, it's a different question. Again, if you're asking about how do we demonstrate ROI from data management and how do we demonstrate ROI from data governance? Yeah, again, I would answer those. I'm not going to try to answer those questions right here, right now, unless it's it's another question from somebody else. But the ROI of knowing how data management and data governance overlap and how they can work together, it's an efficiency and an effective thing, effectiveness thing within organizations, that the organization is going to become much more efficient and effective if you have two different functions that are working together. So the ROI on that is, do you want ROI from either of the two functions? Well, you're going to multiply that if you, they, you have them work together. All these questions, Shannon, that have alternate alternative questions built in. <laughs> it's true. Well, it's you know, it's it's such an in-depth topic. There's such a broad topic. There's there's a lot of things to dive into, right? Um, yeah, and, and, you know, we get that question a lot. You know, how do you you know get executive buy-in and that kind of thing? So. Right. Um, yeah, can, so Bob, you know, can data management report to data governance office to have more working alignment? That's a great question. Um, can data management report to data governance? I'll tell you that right off the top of my head, boy, don't hold me to this, is I would say no. I would say data management shouldn't, that I guess people have asked me the question of which comes first, data management or data governance, which one is the umbrella over the other? You know, it's interesting when you look at the DEMA framework, they call it, a, that's a data management framework, but they include data governance smack in the middle of the framework. So data governance touches every one of those disciplines, at least that's the way I view the data management framework. Um, does data management... It, you know, it really depends in the organization. I would say that their peers, their partners, the people that are running data management should be peers with the people that are running data governance, and they should work together instead of trying to determine which one falls under the other. You know what? The, the, the true answer to the question is, you know, when I get asked, should data governance reside, where should data governance reside, in IT or in the business? I answer the question, yes, it has to reside somewhere. So within your organization right now, if data management reports to data governance or data governance reports to data management, be thankful that you have these functions and that you have them within your organization. Is it ultimately the right place? That really depends on your organization and how well they are able to work together. Perfect. So what is your opinion when both roles, data management and data governance, are the person doing both jobs? <laughs> so there's some so there's only one, there's only one function, and it is data management slash data governance. Um well, there, right there, you've got the built-in partnership, don't you? They're both, they're both part of the same part of the organization. Um, they, um, you know what? You've got to be where, you got to put on your, this is the way I'll answer the question. You've got to put on your data management hat. You've got to put on your data governance hat. So is what you're focusing on more operational and technical in nature, or is what you're focusing on more behavioral? Or if there's a blend, then you might look silly, but you might be wearing two hats at one time, and you might need to take in the perspective of both of these things. So um, if, there, if you're doing both of these, recognize that some of the activities are more data management focused, and some of the activities are more data governance focused, I'm assuming that it, this is a common issue in organizations because not every organization is sizable enough to have multiple functions. So if you're playing both roles, at least make certain that when you're doing your data management activities, that you're applying the right level of governance. Or when you're doing the, the data governance activities, you're applying the right level of data management. I think that's probably the best way to answer that question. 
I love it. And lots of questions coming in. And uh, I love the time that we've got here. So what suggestions or tips would you have for an organization that combines both of them? Um, or you would just kind of, we kind of went over that a little bit already. So um, uh, yeah, I'll throw something in about that. So, you know, if you've already combined them, again, be thankful that you've got them somewhere in your organization and that somebody at least sees the importance of data management versus data governance. Again, there's opportunity there to share with people within your organization how the functions of that group, I don't know if it's called data management or called data governance, how the, the functions of that group and the things that they're doing on a daily basis are, are you know, apply, are, are adding value, are leading to business outcomes for people. So yeah, it is kind of the same question, but a little bit different. Thank you. So in large organizations, you may need to manage very different types of data in different functions. Does it make sense to have data management and data governance? I was, we're still going in the um, reporting yeah. to the same uh, structure of a function. So it's a little bit, it's a little variation of the same question, you know, at, uh, under the same structure of a function, as long as reporting to the same executive. I, that's what I think would might be best for organizations if they both report it up into the same executive. It doesn't mean that it has to be that way. It just for simplicity sake and for education sake and for training sake and you know it you know having it under one executive might make more sense. But again, if it's already set up, and these functions reside under different people, data governance reports up under the chief risk officer and data management reports up under the CIO, well, then we need to have that partnership at that level, at the C level of the organization and work to develop a partnership between the, the disciplines themselves. So yeah, ideally, yeah, having them go through the same person might be a benefit to the organization, it might present its own challenges too, because again, now you'll have groups within the same part of the organization that are battling for the same budget, right? And oh, well, do we give the budget to data management? Do we give the budget to data governance? It can cause benefits and it can cause challenges. So, but I like the idea of, you know, if it's possible, have them report together. Very nice. So we've great, got about three question. minutes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, and um, we've got about three minutes left. And back to kind of the ROI question. So labor time, money, economic cost of doing this versus the return. So why why should they do it? Why shouldn't they do it? Why well, should, will, no, why why do should they do it? Well, yeah. I will tell you that first, because I focus more on data governance than I focus on data management in my career. Data governance is not going, in a lot of ways, data governance does not cost nearly as much as data management in terms of the technology and the, and the building into operations. If you consider that data governance is all about, it, really, I always say that data governance costs you the time that you put into it. Yeah, there might be some technology um, acquisitions you might need to make if you don't already have tools in your environment to leverage, but it's really data governance is mostly people's time and getting people to do the right thing and getting them to understand that when I use data, there's rules associated with how I use it. Or when I define data, there's rules associated with how I look to see if that data has been already defined somewhere else or how I define it this time. Or the same thing applies to producing data. So um, I think that it, it, these functions, the, the, especially the ROI that's going to come from them, if you don't execute and enforce authority over your data, who's going to do that? If you don't deliver a comprehensive set of disciplines associated with the operational management of your data, who's going to do that? Yes, it costs money, but it's also a conscious decision not to invest that money in these disciplines. And the, and the organizations that consciously make the decision not to invest in these disciplines, they find that it ends up costing them more money in the long run. And that, Shannon, is another topic for another webinar. 
Very much so indeed. Well, Bob, that brings us to the top of the hour. Thank you so much for this great presentation. And just to let the attendees know, any questions we didn't get a chance to get to, I'll get those over to Bob so we can get those in the follow-up email, which will go out by end of day Monday, also including links to the slides and links to the recording. Bob, thank you so much. And thanks to all of our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do. We just love it. Thank you. Hope you all have a great day. Thank you very much, Shannon. Thanks, everybody. Ciao.